So US inflation goes back to normal at 3% and the S&P 500 rallies straight back up to near all time highs. However, I've sold out of my S&P 500 holdings way too early and in this video, I'm going to show you the state of my trading 212 portfolio. So as you can see, the current balance of my trading 212 portfolio is 6,040 pounds and currently it is down by a big 94 pounds. However, over the past month, it was actually down by a whole lot more and it was just the past few days where it actually has come back down to a more reasonable amount. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you why that is and the regrets that I may have in trying to time the market with the S&P 500. So first of all, let's go through the free shares that I've had. And as you can see, I received 30 total free shares with a value of 539 pounds. So thank you everyone for that. And many of you have signed up and I haven't received a free share for everything, but I'm still very grateful. You can still sign up with a link in the description down below. I won't receive a free share. However, you should still receive that. So over the past month, like I said, my portfolio has kind of gone crazy. Last month I had around 4,800 and then I put in a thousand and then it went up to 6,000 and it dropped down all the way to 5,800. So at the bottom I was down more than 300 pounds, but currently I'm just down by 94 pounds, which is not too bad at all. As you can see, I only have 41 pence of free funds and I think right now is not the best time to actually keep cash. And I will explain that kind of in the video. So let's go through all my holdings and discuss how they've been doing. So Walt Disney is down by a big 20%. So over the past month, it had a huge decline. I'm not too sure what's happening with Walt Disney, but a 20% dip is quite a bit. In my free trade account, I have around three shares of Walt Disney. However, I only have 0.1 shares here. I have 35 shares of Vodafone and that is down by another big 20%. So you can see over the past month, it went all the way down and all the way up and then all the way down and up again. So it's very much of a yo-yo company at the moment. As far as I know, the talks about merging with three have gone through. So if I'm not incorrect, soon they will become a super group and I'm not entirely sure how that's going to change everything but currently as it stands Vodafone is giving out a dividend yield of 10.79% which is really really high that is because the share price is very low at the moment and I do think that Vodafone is a company that is going to be potentially good for the long term as you can see from the income statements their revenue has pretty much stayed the same for the past few years with their net income increasing if we look at balance sheets Yes, they have more assets that can cover their liabilities. However, because these companies are more telecommunications and they need to invest heavily into infrastructure, for example, when 6G comes out, they're gonna have to spend tons and tons and tons on actually getting all the equipment that will provide the 6G signals. And then of course, maintaining the 5G and 4G networks. They recently said that they're gonna kick out the 3G networks. And that's a reflection of the total amount that it actually costs to maintain those old network cell towers, so on and so forth. You can have a look at cash flow if you wanted to. So next I have the Vanguard Germany all cap and I only have 0 0.8 shares in that and that is down by 5% roughly and that's a 94 pence loss in my portfolio. So I'm going to come back to the FTSE 250 because that represents by far the majority of my shares in my general investment account. So Tesla has gone up in my portfolio by a big 112% and as you can see over the past month it still is increasing and honestly I don't know where Tesla is going to be going in the future. It could go all the way up plus or more but again I don't like to focus on companies that have like I said before this much heat on them this much speculation and honestly the true value of such companies is very much up to what people think it is and if everyone thinks it's going to go up to a thousand pounds you best believe a lot of people are going to invest into it until it comes all crashing down because really is this company worth a thousand pounds a share currently Tesla does not pay a dividend and as you can see from the income statements their revenue is growing exponentially and their balance sheet also looks really good with their total assets increasing from last year, whilst their liabilities are roughly the same. Next, I have Starbucks and that is down by 5%, which is not too bad given the current situation. And as you can see, pretty much flat line from before if you ignore this big dip that happened. And recently, as I said, over the past week, since the US data has come out, that inflation is pretty much steady at 3%, with the Fed's target being around 2 to 2.5%, even 3% is not too far off the mark. So it looks like the US inflation has seized. Of course, celebrating too early can often be very detrimental. So the interest rates are going to still stay high for a few months, if not a year or so. So take that for what it is. We might be seeing a decline in the stock market before a great rise again. So it is in your best interest to keep investing regularly and not listen to the noise in the market. So Starbucks pays a dividend yield of 2%. And as you can see, their revenue has also been increasing near exponentially. Their balance sheet looks very flipped. However, you have to look further 
into a business before actually deciding if you want to invest in it because just because their liabilities are more than their assets doesn't always mean a bad bad thing so next i have rolls royce and that is up by 14 percent which is not too bad at all and as you can see over the past month rolls royce has taken a dip and the future of the company is quite uncertain but i do think in the long term i mean i do hope anyway that rolls royce is going to be a good hold that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best investment because there are probably a lot of other companies you can put your money in and you'll get a return sooner but for long term this sort of profile is probably going to be better for you because then you can start buying a huge amount at a low price and when it goes up then you can really benefit there so like i always say it is personal finance everyone has no matter what they say they have different investment goals some people are really looking for the short term where some people are looking for the medium term some people are looking at the super super long term there is no such thing as an investor that will hold their investments forever because otherwise that does not make sense it means they will never actually recuperate any of the money they put in so just don't listen to people when they say they will either hold for a very short term because they might not do that or a very long term because also they might not do that but anyway Rolls Royce is not paying a dividend yield and as you can see from the income statement their revenue has increased and the balance sheet looks like they're taking a lot more debt than they have assets to pay that off so PayPal I have 1.6 shares in that and that is up by 11% so not doing too bad at all and as you can see over the past month since CPI numbers have come out yes PayPal has been doing pretty well they do not pay a dividend yield and as you can see from the income statements the revenue is going up nicely every year we can see they have a lot of liabilities but again financial companies may have a lot of liabilities in terms of debt but that is more acceptable than other companies that might have this amount of liability to asset ratio. Orange, I have 2.3 shares and that is down by 7%. Orange pays a nice dividend yield of 6%. And as you can see from the income statement, it looks very steady over the past few years. Again, Orange is one of those companies that become like Vodafone, not a lot of people are actually buying sims from orange they're not producing any sorts of phones or have any major deals with entertainment companies like o2 does so the future is uncertain of orange but then again i'm not putting a whole lot of money into them anyway so nvidia has been doing incredibly incredibly well i have 0 0.09 shares which is almost insignificant but it has gone up by 195 percent which is the most i've ever seen a company go up by in my portfolio and as you can see over the past month nvidia has been doing incredibly incredibly well with the advent of the whole AI boom, AI revolution, I will say that I don't think NVIDIA is going to be the only company at the forefront of AI. We've seen this recently over the past month where many, many new companies are adapting or improving their technologies that don't rely on NVIDIA necessarily. And I do really, really think that at one point there will be a chip maker that will be able to produce chips that will be able to compute more AI calculations faster and better cheaper than NVIDIA. So until then, NVIDIA can rally all the way up, but I personally will not be buying into them. NVIDIA does pay a tiny, tiny dividend of 0.03%. I honestly don't know why they bother. Maybe it's to do something with tax, something along those lines. But as you can see, revenue has been going up quite well with a dip this year. But then again, NVIDIA has heavily invested in new technologies with the new RTX 6000 cards for graphics designers, AI and stuff has come out. So I think NVIDIA will be fine for the long run. But I personally do have a hunch that NVIDIA's days are numbered just like Intel because of the way they are taking advantage of the market. Next, we have Nike and I have 0.2 shares in Nike and that is down by 3%, which is not too bad at all. Another thing to note is that the currency exchange between the pound and the dollar has reversed again. So the pound is becoming day by day stronger against the dollar. This means there will be some differences in losses through the FX impact. When the pound was weakening, any sort of American companies were paying out a bit more for us because the dollar was stronger back then. So as the dollar weakens, we're gonna see that we're gonna get less gain from these American companies. But anyway, Nike pays a dividend yield of again a small one at 1.26%. The revenue has been going up year on year. And as you can see from the balance sheet, they look pretty good too. Next, I have half a share in National Grid and that is up by 2%. I have 0.18 shares in Mercedes-Benz. And over the past month, Mercedes-Benz has taken a bit of a tumble, but that is still up in my portfolio by 0.44%. They do pay a nice dividend yield of 7%. So that's really nice. And as you can see from their income statement their revenue has gone up and the balance sheets look 
pretty okay, especially for a company like Mercedes-Benz, which has been around for centuries now. So even if the company were to go into big trouble, I'm sure their government will bail them out. Next, we have Lloyds Banking Group. And I think this is one of the ones that if I had to invest in individual companies, I would actually probably put a lot more money into Lloyds Banking Group. So I have 120 shares and that's down by 13%, which I do think is a pretty good time to buy, but I'm not going to do that because I'd rather put my money into ETF. But anyway, they do pay a nice dividend yield of 5%. And I think you can see from their income statement, it's quite all over the place and their liabilities are very high. But I think Lloyd's Banking Group personally will be something that will be there with us for the future. This is definitely not financial advice, but this is a company that I will be watching. So next I have Royal Mail, I have 6.2 shares in that. And actually very surprisingly, they're up by 17% in my portfolio. As you can see from the past month, they went straight up. I have no idea what's happening there. They do pay a dividend, a nice dividend actually at that of 6.63%. You can see from the income statement that their revenue has kind of been decreasing and their balance sheets are looking worse and worse per year. However, again, it's one of those companies that the government will probably bail out if they were in any big trouble because of course, Royal Mail has been a staple of British parcel sending, letter sending, whatever you want to call it for, you know, probably centuries too. There's not much else to say about this company, but I'm very happy that it is up by 17%. Next, I have IAG and that's down by around 8%. I only have 6.3 shares. And as you can see over the past month, they have been declining quite steeply. They don't pay a dividend yield. And you can see from the income statement, they've been making a lot more recently. That is almost definitely due to the pandemic effect, of course, where aviation has started to, I always say this, but take off again you can see from the balance sheets that they have a lot of liabilities but that is very very common for you know a company that has to buy so much fuel and the cost of actually maintaining those planes are very, very high. Next, I have one share in H&M and that is up by a huge 47%. So that's not something that I was expecting, but as you can see over the past month, they went straight up. H&M pays a decent dividend at 3.62%. And as you can see from the income statement, they have been making a bit more money from the balance sheets look very similar over the past few years. So compared to their all time highs, they're still, they're still quite a ways down from that. But I think maybe in the long term, H&M could possibly be a good company to invest in, although I would not put any more money into this. So next I have GlaxoSmithKline and they are down only by 0.5%. As you can see from the past month, they've been taking quite a dip. They do pay a dividend, a good one at that at 5.66%. And as you can see from the income statements, the revenue has gone up and the balance sheets look okay, I think, for a big pharmaceutical company. Direct Line Insurance has been doing terribly, so that's down by 26% over the past month. Again, tumbling. They do pay a big dividend yield of 5.3%, but as you can see from the income statement, their revenue has gone down a lot and their balance sheets are not looking great. I only have two shares in this, but I wouldn't really recommend looking too heavily into this company. From the income statement, you could probably actually guess that they might be cutting their dividends soon because they probably might need to focus more on surviving. And next I have Lufthansa and that is down by 4% in my portfolio. I only have seven shares. And as you can see, that is a loss of two pounds and 41 pence. They don't pay a dividend yield, but as you can see again, similarly to the other airline company, since the pandemic, they are taking off again and their balance sheets are looking okay for an airline company. So next I have 0.6 shares in Delivery Hero and that that is up by 5% in my portfolio. You can see over the past month, it has been increasing quite nicely. They do not pay a dividend yield. And as you can see, their revenue has grown exponentially over the past three years and their balance sheets are also looking very good. Next, I have Carnival. I have exactly one share of this and that is up by a massive 71%. And as you can see, that is a gain of £4.97. So again, I didn't put a lot into there. I actually received a free share of this. They pay a dividend yield of 3% and as you can see, their revenue has been increasing. However, the net income is still negative and the balance sheets are looking like they are taking more debt than they have available assets. Carnival is a leisure travel company, so they have a portfolio of cruise lines and I'm not too sure about the cruise line market if that has been increasing since the pandemic, which I'm sure it kind of has been, but I'm guessing they have to invest a lot of money in keeping those cruise lines both maintained and building new ones. And of course, all the entertainment and stuff that comes along with having cruise liners. Next, I have BP and that is up by 15% roughly. And over the past month, it has been going up and down quite rapidly. They pay a dividend yield of 4.59% 
percent. And as we know with these companies, their revenue has soared since you know after the pandemic and the whole global energy supply scare thing. And you can see from the balance sheet, I think they're going to be more than fine. But again, energy companies like this are very cyclical. They're going to go through phases of highs and lows. And going forward, I don't think they're going to make as much profit as they have since the pandemic. Next, I have BMW, and that is up by a nice six percent in my portfolio. That is 65p gain. They pay a really big dividend of 7.94% as a yield. Their revenue has also been increasing near exponentially and their balance sheet also look very good. Next, I have Aston Martin. So, so many automobile companies in my portfolio. I have 1.3 shares of that. And that is up by a huge 118% in my portfolio. So, after Nvidia, this might be the highest. Because here in the past month, they have increased. However, they did peak at around the 26th of June. They do not pay a dividend yield. And as you can see from the income statement, revenue has increased, but income has decreased. And their balance sheets look like they're taking a lot of liabilities on. Not sure what this company will be long term, but I know at one point it had a very high valuation of over 40 pounds that's when i bought it on my free trade account which was a big fat mistake next i have asml and they are up by around two percent over the past month they have been also increasing with a big dip on the 7th of july they pay a very small dividend yield of 0.85 percent and from the income statement you can see the revenue has also increased quite exponentially balance sheets also look good so this could be a company for the long term as we can see it is approaching its near all-time pandemic of a valued value but i don't know too much about this company anyway so apple up by 16 percent over the past month it has peaked on the 30th and then increasing. I would expect this company to keep increasing because they are doing really, really well in all fronts. Their dividend yield is again small at 0.5%. And for a company like this, I'm almost not bothering to look at the financials because I'm sure they have enough cash to hold on for another decade. So the top companies are all companies in the S&P 500. Again, Amazon going up over the past month. That is up by 36% in my portfolio, giving me a gain of £26.14. You can see the FX impact, that's a negative £5 because of the change in currency with the pound strengthening and the dollar weakening. And on that front, the dollar is weakening because everyone knows that the interest rate for the US is going to be pausing or reducing in the near future. Alphabet is up by again 30% over the past month, also doing almost exactly the same as Amazon. They pay no dividend yield and their revenue has also been increasing and their balance sheets are going to be fine anyway. Lastly, AMD in my invest account that is up by 42% doing really well, but not the same kind of increase we've seen with Amazon, Google and Apple. They do not pay a dividend yield. However, for from the income statement, you can see that the revenue has increased exponentially too. Balance sheets are also looking incredibly, incredibly good. Look at that asset to liability ratio. So if I go into my history tab, you can see that total realized profits, 217 pounds. Recently, I have not been actually trading. I don't think trading is a viable option to make money in the long term anyway, but I did it for fun. And you can see that I've made a realized profit of 217 pounds. Dividends, I've been paid out total of 72 pounds. So I'm gonna quickly go through my pie, which is the almost daily dividend pie and I did make a mistake because I accidentally sold around £25 worth. I was trying to withdraw all the free cash that I had which wasn't a lot and then I ended up selling £25 worth of companies which is okay. Um, as you can see the portfolio overall is down by £22 so that's a 6% negative. That doesn't take into consideration you know the kind of £25 worth of holdings that I accidentally sold but going forward I'm definitely not going to be putting any more money into the almost daily dividend pie. As you can see some companies are down quite heavily. 3M down by 26% and if you wanted to check out this pie, you can actually do that in the link in the description down below. If you sign up using this link and this pie, you will also get a free share. But you can see some of these companies are down by over 20%. This pie is not doing too great at all. In terms of dividends, it has paid £7.93, which again is not too, too bad. But I would rather be putting my money into ETFs than this pie. But shout out to the dividend experiment who, you know, came up with this pie and his great content. So if you do want to support him with the pie, go directly to him, I guess. Also, just to come back to the FTSE 250, so I have 172 shares in that, and that is down by 2.47%. Over the past month, I was down a whole lot more, and I was really regretting buying the FTSE 250. As you can see, that is a £125 loss, so it is quite heavy on the eyes. But I do definitely think in the long term, the FTSE 250 is going to be a great place to just keep putting money while it's low. And I do think we're going to start seeing that it climbs back up, and maybe just sell it then, or just hold on. Instead of putting money into the 
S&P 500 right now when it's going back to its all-time high. I would definitely rather put it into the FTSE 250 and also see some really good dividends at that. So as you can see, I had a dividend on the 30th of June of £47, so that's not too bad at all. And I put it in directly back in and I bought it at 28.47. It did drop all the way down to 27 something. Let's see if I bought anything at that price. Nope, I did not. If I had more money, I'd have put it all in into £27, but that did not happen. So now I want to show you my trading 2 and 2 ISA. As you can see from the value, it is 20,423. And at one point within the month, it was down by a massive 7%. That's a negative return of 1,533 pounds. And again, I was regretting very much putting my money into the FTSE 250, but alas, it did go up and it did go up a lot more. If I had more money, I would have put it when the FTSE 250 was down and that would have been an immediate return. Very, very nice amounts. So I'm still happy with the ISA because it's still more than I put in at the beginning of the tax year. If I go into history, you can see the realized profit is £945, which is not bad of a return in the entire year. And I currently only have one holding, that's in the FTSE 250. I went all the way in on the FTSE 250, so I have 711.5 shares, worth currently 70423 but when it goes back up, which I'm sure it will do, it will be worth a whole lot more. From the history, you can see I received a tasty dividend of £247 on the 30th of June. And going forward, I do think that I would rather put my money into the FTSE 250 for the long term, even if it takes two years. I want to just put in everything there. And then when it comes time to shine, I think I'm going to be rewarded quite nicely. So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.